Hey, it's Matt with an uplink tech video. Today I'm going to walk you through an installation of Apache ActiveMQ. ActiveMQ is a Java application, so when installing it on a Linux server, it really has two requirements. It's going to need a local user and then a, a recent Java JDK. The version of ActiveMQ I'm using today is 5.16.0, and this added support for Java 11, so I'm going to go ahead and use a recent Java 11 JDK. And from a local user perspective, um, I went ahead and just added a user called ActiveMQ, but you can use any, any user account that, that fits in your environment. So I'll just quickly validate that the job I've got installed is what I expect. There's our version 11. And then I created a download script that pulls the ActiveMQ media from Maven Central. I like pulling a, a many open source uh, installation packages from Maven because this easily adapts to an enterprise environment. So if you're building an Ansible job, an RPM, or a, or a Linux container, uh, you, can, you can source it from a Maven repository and then quickly adapt this script to point to your local or your on-premise uh, Maven repository that might be behind your firewall or your proxy. So we pull down the media, and let's go ahead and use our favorite tar command. There we go. And that pretty much gets us uh, the entire media down and installed. I mean, at this point, ActiveMQ could run, and in most cases, it'd work fine uh, in most applications. I'm gonna go ahead and add a symlink, though, um, because just as a best practice perspective, I like to be able to have a um, location where I can have multiple copies of the media, and so this allows us to do upgrades and rollbacks. So I've created a symlink called active, and we're gonna work out of there. Great. So, ActiveMQ ships with a script in the bin folder called ActiveMQ, and it has a lot of tasks available to it. So if you give it the dash help, you'll see that you've got the several tasks and notes about what they do. We're gonna use the start and stop, as well as the producer consumer, and then this bstat command. So let's go ahead and test our starting and stopping. Great, uh, ActiveMQ start command looks like it succeeded and it's telling us that the process ID should be 20627, and we can quickly validate that. And just as a good practice, we'll go ahead and stop it, make sure we get a nice clean shutdown. Great, start and stop looks good. Now, I'm gonna do a couple quick tuning settings. Since we're in an enterprise environment, most of the time we're gonna need applications uh, to be able to send more messages than the default settings. So in ActiveMQ, there's a little file uh, in the bin folder called env, and you'll find the memory settings are there. So in the ActiveMQ ops memory line, if you change that one to a four, this will allow ActiveMQ to use up to four gig of memory. And this is a good idea if you've got a server with at least eight gig of RAM. Now, additionally, I wanna enable the JMX access and require username and password. So JMX allows us to monitor and manage ActiveMQ remotely. And so we're going to want to take advantage of that. Great. And then lastly, because we're using JMX and we want to have an authenticated uh, access to that or secured access, we need to change the JMX password file to make sure it's only readable by the ActiveMQ user as a security measure. So we're going to use the Unix command chmod and set the 400 flag on that. And now only the ActiveMQ user will be able to read that password file. Okay, so let's start ActiveMQ up. We give it the start command. Now we can use the bstat command. And this is a way to quickly, from the command line, make sure that the broker is running. And here we can validate that it found the process ID and we've got the broker running. And also tell us what the uptime is. So if you need some quick and dirty scripts or DevOps tools, this is something you can build around. So now let's go ahead and send some test messages. If we use the producer task on the ActiveMQ script, it's just gonna quickly fire a thousand messages up to a queue named test. Awesome, active queue nice and fast. We got that done in a few seconds. Now when we run the bstat command, we can validate what we have in the queue. Great, so now we can see that we have a queue here called test and that the end queue count is a thousand and no messages have been dequeued. And that's exactly what we'd expect. Now we're gonna run the consumer command and this is gonna take the messages off. Again, nice and fast. And we give it the bstat command, and we can see that the messages have been 
dequeued. The thousand messages that were in queued were also dequeued. So you have it, ActiveMQ installed and running. Thank you for checking out this video. And if you have any questions, uh, shoot us a note in the comments. Also, all these scripts and the commands I use to get this installation going, as always, are available on the Uplink GitHub site. Thanks.